This is Amstark, in this video we are looking at iterative root finding. So when a sequence converges to a particular formula, an iterative formula can be used. And here we have a question to show how this works. And it says that the curve C with the equation Y is equal to E to the X meets the line L with equation Y is equal to 5X minus 1 at the point P. So first of all, we need to show that the X coordinate of P satisfies X is equal to ln 5X minus 1. So to start this off, we're just going to have to say that e to the x is equal to 5x minus 1. Now we know this because they're both equal to y, so they must be equal to each other. Now then we're going to learn both sides. Now this will get rid of the e. So we've got learn e there, um, and then we have learn 5x minus 1. This cancelled this, which will mean that x is going to be equal to ln 5x minus 1. In part b, this is where we're going to be using this iteration formula. So we found in part a what the iteration formula is. And sometimes it won't give you what it's going to be. We just have to work out what x is, and we're always looking for what x is. Then we have to use this. Starting with x0 is going to be equal to 2.5. And we've got to find to three decimal places the value of x1, x2, and x3. So x1. First of all, what we're going to do is in our calculators, we're going to put 2.5 in our calculators and press answer. So now it's pressed answer. What we can type into our calculator is ln, and then we'll do 5 answer, which is 2.5 minus 1. So using that answer function, what we're going to get to the first one is 2.442. But now we have that answer function in. Now what we need to do is press equals. And every time we press equals, we'll get the next one. So the next one we can get is 2.417. And then x3. So if we press equals once again, we're going to get 2.406. So as we can see, it's converging closer and closer to the actual answer. Now, if we continually pressed equals, what we would get is our final answer. And if you do this in your calculator, what you'll see is that it just continually gets closer and closer and closer until we get 2.396. And that would be our answer from the thing. But obviously, this question only asks for x1, x2, and x3. So this question is saying that show that the equation f of x and f of x is equal to e to the x plus 2 plus x minus 10 can be written in the form x is equal to ln 10 minus x and then minus 2. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is take the x minus 10 onto the other side. So that means that what we're left with is going to be e uh, to the x plus 2 is equal to 10 minus x. Then we'll do logs to both sides. So what we'll then have is x plus 2 is equal to ln 10 minus x. So then we've got x is equal to ln 10 minus x. That is minus 2. So therefore, that is our answer to A. And the next thing, we're going to be using this in an iteration formula, what we've just found. Um, and we're going to start with x0 is equal to 0 0.5. So we're putting x0 is equal to 0 0.5. And therefore, we're typing in x0, uh, 0 0.5 on our calculator and using that as answer. So in order to do x1, what we have is we now have ln 10 minus answer. So in that first case, this is 10 minus 0 0.5. So that's essentially 9.5 minus 2. And to x1, what we're going to be getting 
is 0.251. Then x2, again now all we need to do is press equals button and we get 0 0.277. And then finally for x3, we are going to get 0 0.274. And two, three decimal places, this is actually our final point. So the final question is asking us to choose a suitable interval and prove that alpha is equal to 0 0.275 to three decimal places. So in order to do this question, we're going to have to use the change of sign method, which we looked at last video. So if you don't know about that, watch the last video before this and then come back to this now. So then in order to do this, we're going to say that 0 is equal to e x plus 2 plus x minus 10. And that is the thing here. And here, f x is equal to 0. So therefore, the two things that we're going to allow are we're going to let x is equal 0.2745 and x equal 0.2755. Now these are in between the 0.27, uh, the 0.275. So we've got one lower and one slightly higher. So therefore, now what we need to do is type this in to our calculator. So let x, so for example, for the first one, we would do e and then 0.2745 plus two, then plus 0.2745 minus 10, that is equal in standard form to minus 2.44 times by 10 to the minus 3. So we can say that that minus 2.44 times 10 to the minus 3. If you do the same for x equal to 0 0.2755, what we're going to get is 8.28 times 10 to the minus 3. So now we can say that there is a change of sign. So that means we have proved it there. So the next thing to look at which relate to iterative processes is the graphs. And these are either staircase or cobweb graphs. So the first one we'll show is a staircase graph. And in order to do this, you draw the curve that you're looking at. So we have our curve here, which you can say is C. And then you draw Y is equal to X. And then what you do is you draw a line up to the curve like that. Then you draw from the curve to the line. And then you draw back from a line to the curve, then from the curve to the line. And there you have, from that staircase there, that is your point there where the intersect. That is your point. And that's why it looks like a staircase. And that's essentially what you're doing in the iterative process. That's the x1, you've got x2 there, then that's your final point there. Because you're going like that, that, that. The next one is a cobweb diagram. And this time, you're going to do exactly the same process. It's just going to look slightly different. So you're going to go up all the way to your curve, like that. Then you're going to go across the line, like this. Then you're going to carry on through here. You're going to go back to the curve, the line. And then eventually, this one's quite a long one here because you could have started off as a better place. And this shows that you can start off in better places to make it so it's quicker. But you carry on. And then eventually, what you start to get is it starts to come closer and closer and closer to your actual point. 
And as you can see, this is why it's called a cobweb diagram because it looks like a cobweb. And the closer we get, and so eventually, we're going to get to our point. So that is why that one's a cobweb because it looks like a cobweb, and then this one is a staircase because it's in, but it's a way to find the point. That's the point of intersection there, and that's the point of intersection there. So in our final question, we've got a few different parts to it. And the first part says that by sketching a pair of graphs on a single diagram, show that the equation theta is equal to two sine theta, where theta is in radians and has exactly one solution between half pi and pi. So first of all, we're going to draw the point of y is equal to theta, which is likewise equal to x, just a straight line graph coming from there. And then we're also going to draw uh, two sine theta. Now we know that sine theta would cross the um, x-axis at two pi. So this means that two sine theta is gonna cross it at pi. So therefore, it's just gonna be like this, because we're doing it from that to that. And then that is pi there. That's pi, that there is half pi. And it says, show that it has exactly one solution. That is our solution there. For that, that is in between half pi and pi. The next question is saying, the diagram, which is not drawn to scale, shows a sector OAB of a circle. So this is a sector here. The angle subtended by arc AB at the center O is a radians and it has a radius of four. Now given that the area of a triangle, which is this part here, equals the area of the shaded segment, that part there, show that alpha is equal to two sine alpha. So therefore, in this one, we're gonna be using our knowledge of trigonometry. So we know that the triangle is gonna be half AB sine C. And that is gonna be half times by 16 times sine alpha, which is equal to eight sine alpha. Now as for this shaded segment here, well, we know that this is gonna be half of the whole sector. And to work out a sector, a sector is going to be half r squared theta. But because it's that's the whole sector and we know that this is half of the sector, it's gonna be half times by half r squared theta. That's equal to half times by and then that's gonna be eight theta, which means that's equal to four alpha, because theta in this case is alpha. So that therefore, what we have now is that four alpha is equal to eight sine alpha. So sine alpha, is equal to a half alpha, so therefore alpha is equal to two sine alpha. So now we have that, the final question is using this iterative formula. And the iterative formula is theta is equal to two sine theta, and we have to choose a suitable starting value to find angle um, alpha to two decimal places. And then we also have to justify our answer. So therefore, at C, well, our suitable value that we could choose, we could say that x naught is equal to one. That's a good value. We can see if that works. Some of them, if they didn't work, you just have to choose a different starting value. But then for x one, we will put in, so we'll say one is equal to our answer. So then we'll do two sine answer, which is equal to 1.68 x two, is equal then to 1.99 x3 is equal to 1.83 and we'll carry on pressing answer until we get our final one of 1.90 to two decimal places so therefore now we have that 
what we have to do is we have to look back at this original one. And when this is zero, you can say that theta minus two sine theta is equal to zero. So using this, we've got 1.90. We have to prove that that's going to be correct. So the two different things that we're going to put in are therefore we're going to let x equal 1.895. Now once we put that in, we've got 1.895 minus 2 sine of 1.895. That is going to be equal to minus 8.95. 4 times 10 to the minus 4 and then x is also going to be equal to 1.905 and that is going to be equal to 0 0.0157 when putting it into theta minus 2 sine theta so therefore we've justified our answer because of this change in sine so that is the iterative root finding. I hope you enjoyed. See you soon. Bye.